So while we're on the topic of troubleshooting message delivery, it's worth taking a look at transport queues as well. Now, there's two ways that we can do this. The first way that I'll show you is using the Exchange Toolbox. And you can find that in your start screen. You might have to do a search for Toolbox for it to show up. Inside the Toolbox, we have uh, this queue viewer. So I'll open that for my server. So right now on my Exchange server, I have two messages stuck in a queue and we can see that those messages are trying to deliver to the testexchangeconnectivity.com domain. So you might see other queues and other messages in here. Uh, sometimes those queues will be backing up to hundreds or even thousands of messages, which might indicate an issue with delivery to a particular domain. Or if you're seeing lots of domains in here, you might be having trouble with uh, delivery to uh, all domains. You might have a complete outbound mail uh, issue that you need to investigate. So we can dive into that queue that has two messages and we can see a little bit more information about them. There's the recipient information. There's some last area information, which is a little bit vague. We can also see the subject. So in this case, it's an undeliverable message going back to the remote connectivity analyzer test. So what that's from is the inbound message that we sent to Alan Reed, which failed because his mailbox was over quota. And we see that our exchange server is trying to deliver back a non-delivery message uh, to Microsoft's remote connectivity analyzer domain which in all likelihood does not actually have a mail server there ready to accept that uh, message. Now here's something interesting as well for messages that are in queues. They will not stay there forever. They will eventually expire. And we can see the date that the message was received in our queue and when it will expire. So in this case, it's got about two days before it's going to uh, expire or, or drop out of the queue and be lost basically forever. So just drilling into uh, the server section, selecting our server and opening the properties. We can see these transport limit here, which actually is where that message expiration is set. So if you have concerns about messages expiring in only two days within your organization, you can increase that to any other number that you think is suitable. Just be aware that the more messages that are sitting in your transport queues, the larger the transport database will be obviously the more work that the server needs to do to continually retry sending those. Now what will also happen is the sender of the message will get a notification of a delayed message after four hours by default. And of course you can change that one as well. So if you'll use uh, particularly sensitive about delayed messages, perhaps you could lower that to one hour. If they're a little bit less sensitive and you don't want to bother them with delayed messages because you know you have a, uh, an unstable outbound email uh, route, you may choose to increase that to a large number such as eight hours. Now we can also look at our queues in PowerShell, of course. And for that, we simply use the get queue commandlet and we can specify a remote server to look at if we like. In this case, I'm just searching the, uh, the local server. We can see basically the same information uh, that was present in the graphical queue viewer. So we've got two messages stuck in this queue for the next hop domain of testexchangeconnectivity.com. So if I identify the exact queue that I want to look at, and then we can also pipe that into get message see a little bit more information about those uh, messages. Of course, we can increase the amount of uh, detail we see by piping to format list. And once again, similar to the graphical uh, queue viewer, we get to see more information about these messages, how long they've been in the queue, when they'll expire, 
and there may even be some uh, error information that helps us to work out exactly why. So this last error, for example, is often populated with quite useful information, such as if the uh, receiving system is rejecting the mail or if we're having some kind of DNS lookup issue.